Okay, now we're ready for the uh, 10 mile road test. Uh, the test starts with a restart of the engine, so we'll uh, see if we get a good restart. Started right up, idling pretty well. Our temperature hasn't come up very much. Um, we'll do a quick gauge check. We're showing charge. Our, our um, fuel gauge is low. Um, we note the odometer, 198, and the trip meter, which we'll have to reset later at 008.8. And actually, I can reset that now. And so I'm gonna reset that. Hopefully this goes. This is a, a problem child for a lot of these because they want to just shoot right past zero like that, but then usually you can bring them right back. So trip odometer was reset, zero, zero. That function is good. And we're going to head out on the road test. So on the road test, we're gonna be checking quite a few things. I'm gonna roll the window up here just to hopefully get a little less outside wind noise, but on the road test, you're gonna do all kinds of jerk accelerations. Try to have it pop in and out of gear. You're gonna decelerate down hills. Um, I've got a left turn right now. We're gonna make sure that the left turn reset works. So I'm going to go around the corner here making sure nobody runs into me. Yeah, we got a left turn reset. We're going to listen for any kind of unusual vibrations or noise. Make sure that it shifts into gear, shifts out of gear. Our temperature's coming up. The judge will have you kind of check your gauges from time to time, making sure everything looks good and is functioning properly. Here's a, a, a downhill, a really steep downhill. So I'm gonna put it in second. And you can hear the tranny kind of whine and we're putting a lot of pressure on it. And then I'm gonna accelerate and decelerate. And accelerate and decelerate. If it pops out of gear, that'll be a failure right there. So. want to check all the functions of the car, the transmission shifting, any unusual noise, um, differential noise, that's a big deal. So to check for differential noise, you, you want to coast going downhill, uphill, um, excessive steering wheel, free play. Uh, the judge is very, very versed at picking up on every little nuance of these cars. He has he has done so many of these that he knows whether or not it's supposed to be right or not. Um, make sure there is absolutely no needle bounce on your speedometer needle. How do you like that, Chief Judge? Uh, make sure your tachometer needle is completely steady. I'm gonna operate the vents. There's the passenger vent. Can feel air coming out. You feel air, Barnes? Yep. Driver's vent. I feel air there. That's pretty good. So we got the vents. Now I'm going to do a, a, a fairly hard brake to make sure that the car doesn't wander. And we have a great stop right there. That's some stuff slide forward in the back. That was that loud bang you heard. But our brake isn't, isn't pulling at all. And it's just general tightness of vehicle is checked. And a lot of it is you just kind of enjoy driving the car. When we were prepping for our PV test, um, the owner, Dr. Pete and I, and also Andrew, um, have done this test no less than 50, 60 times. And the surprising thing about it is, is that I'd say every time we did it, something didn't really work all perfectly and so you just tested and retested and retested until you got it right and our first go around we didn't get it um, 
but our second go around we passed with flying colors. So you just uh, you keep at it and anybody that's trying to do this test or pass this test, like I said, have your manual and uh, test it out. Um, you want to check and make sure that your sun visors aren't migrating. They stay in their position. They stay up. Your rear view mirror doesn't move at all. It stays. Your ashtray uh, lever cover stays in its position. Your shifter itself does not vibrate excessively. Some amount of vibration is, is pretty normal with these cars. Um, if you're driving on a PV test, you, I mean, you don't want to scare the judge. You want to just kind of drive normally and uh, and just show him that you have confidence um, in the car and that you've put on enough mileage on it that, you know, you're well aware that, you know what, everything's going to work. And if you can do that, then you'll probably pass. A lot of times you'll flunk on really, really stupid stuff. One specifically is that, and maybe Andrew, you can tell them about that little debacle. One thing that you'll come across with these locks is if you use a reproduction lock, they're made differently than originals. When you insert the key in there, if you actually had side by side an original and a reproduction, the reproductions just don't feel as tight. This little piston moves around a lot more in a reproduction. Well, what'll happen is when you put the key in there, you can turn it and if you jiggle it and work it, sometimes they'll pop free and you can rotate that piston a full 360 degrees and that's considered a PV failure. So we're on a really, we're on kind of a, a, a back road here out near my shop and uh, the um, PV judge is gonna stop you and have you go in reverse for an extended period of time and he's gonna listen. And then stop and then go back again. And he's listening for excessive amounts of, of differential gear noise and anything else. He'll get outside and listen for that. So that's something to really double check. Now we have reverse noise, but that's normal. You know, these transmissions, these transmissions, um, they make noise. The other thing he's going to have you do is he's going to have you stop on a hill and let off the brake and make sure your parking brake doesn't move. And then in second gear, he's going to have you let out on the clutch and see if the engine loads and you don't move. He'll have you do that on an incline and a decline. Now, I'm not really going in any like specific order here, but what I would, what I would do if I were prepping and have done for my PV I'd have a, somebody right along with me that just acts as the judge and administers the test step by step, item by item, line by line to make sure that everything is normal. Now, as you can kind of see, our, our oil pressure has come down a little bit. Everything's warmed up. Our water temp's at 180. That's fantastic. We're charging a little bit. Our fuel gauge is still low. Hopefully we don't run out, which I'm sure has happened on a PV. Now we've gone three and a half miles so far. Um, so far I haven't taken a right hand turn so I don't know if the right hand turn signal indicator will cancel but I bet it will. So you know it's just kind of a fun a fun thing to do. I'm gonna shift through all the gears and just you know just drive the car normally. The PV judge might have you do another brake check. So uh, we'll do a brake check, a hard braking. Doesn't, doesn't wander, doesn't pull. Uh, this car has 411s and so uh, the rear ends on 411s are a little bit, little bit noisier than uh, say a, a regular. Uh, lower or higher gear So I got my left turn on right here Make sure it cancels again. We've already done this, but We'll do it again. No one's coming Yep
which is a lot of fun to drive these cars, especially one that is as nice as this. I mean, we don't hear any, there's no excessive body roll. The suspension is working really well. The brakes are working really well. Uh, one thing I will note is that this car right now drives better than it did on the PV because we actually have radial tires on it. That would be a PV failure if you do that. You have to do the PV with your hubcaps in place and your radial tires. So here's our right turn. The right turn, let's make sure it cancels the way that it should. And it did, so we're good to go there. Here's a really, really good hill get up here part ways and then I'll double check and make sure that the emergency brake holds going backwards also as well as forwards so we'll just stop right here this is a tough one but as you can see I'm off the brake we're not rolling and the emergency brake is working so then you can take off again PV judge is going to be listening for excessive clutch chatter, clutch slippage, popping out of gear, stuff like that. You know, this vehicle should perform as it was from the factory. New from the factory. And new from the factory, this vehicle was able to do 90% of redline. So here we go. We're gonna do 90% of red line. In first gear. And it successfully has done it. Kind of creeped up on it, and that's all you have to do. You just have to make sure that it will get to the RPMs. And we hit about 5,800 RPMs, which this has a 6,500 RPM red line. So it wasn't a, uh, a violent occurrence. I didn't scare the judge. Andrew, were you scared? I was not. You're not scared. We did first gear, flat road, straight ahead. So it easily went up to 90% of red line. Now we'll just kind of cruise along here, 55 miles an hour, running about 27, 2800 RPMs. Car runs good, a little bouncy, I know, but kind of the way it's supposed to be. Don't have a lot of heat coming through. Gonna do a left turn. Make sure it, the left turn cancels on lots of left turns. Not nearly as many right turns, but that just is kind of the way that it goes. Kind of a bumpy road, so make sure we're good there. Beautiful day to do a PV test. It's about 75 degrees. Out on the country roads, just cruising around in a 1963 split window Corvette. Doesn't get a whole lot better than that. Well, maybe it was a convertible. Because it is starting to get a little hot in here. It is getting a little roasty. But black car, um, a lot of fun. Especially on roads like this. So I'm just double checking, making sure everything is looking good. Our temperature has never gone above 180. It stayed right where it needs to stay. A little funny story um, about our PV prep, um, and it, it's actually fitting that, that we have we have done this um, on video. Uh, when Dr. Pete and I were, were prepping for the PV, we uh, were about two weeks away from our first attempt at the PV, and uh, we were making notes of the odometer reading and everything like that. And um, I asked Pete, I said, Pete, uh, how's the odometer doing? How's the speedometer? And he, he said, oh, it's great. It's at 198. And 
I think to myself, 198, okay, that, 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 that sounds about right. Well, we continue on the PV, and we drive at least another four or five miles. And I asked him, I said, Pete, what's the odometer? And he looks down and he says, 198. So then, we're like, oh shit, are you kidding me? Our odometer has stopped working, the speedometer was working, the trip was working, the odometer had just quit. And this is literally two weeks before we had to show up in Seaside for our first attempt at our PV. We ended up flunking the PV, but regardless, the odometer quit two weeks before. So we had to pull the gauge cluster out, send it over to speedometer services, have them fix it, and then it was just a complete and total stress as to whether or not the odometer was gonna get stuck on 198 again. And so far, it's at 206 right now. We've gone about eight miles on this test drive and uh, everything seems to be working. So knock on wood, the Grim Reaper of Corvette PB has not reared its ugly head again. And Dr. Pete, you can, uh, you can sleep knowing that your odometer has now breached 200, which should have been for the second time. So that makes total mileage on this vehicle since the finished completed restoration of about 400 and some odd miles, a little bit over 400 miles. So we're just kind of on some hills here, just cruising right along. Exhaust, you can hear the solid lifters spinning a lot of RPMs as those 411s. About 53, and we're about 2600. Come to the stop. car to drive. I don't know if that actually translates to video very well, but the nose comes up, the back end squats down, the engine revs up, and it just takes off and goes. I can only imagine what it was like to be a younger guy back in the 60s when this thing was brand new, going to the lot and test driving one of these. That had to have been quite an experience, especially one that's black with leather and is fuel injected. So here we are back at the shop. We pull it in and uh, they say 90% of success on a PV is getting off of the green, which is the judging field. So here we are back at the shop, idling about 950, which is typical. Um, ending miles 9.6 and 208. So if you do the math, that uh, totally jives. Everything is good, still great temperature. And make sure that the engine does not diesel or run on when you stop. And it does. So test drive success. Now we'll just go ahead and uh, finish up the rest of the uh, test. There's a couple things left on the checklist and then uh, we are done with our PV.